Hello and welcome to yet another episode of The Millionaire Mind. My name is Turi Faye and joining us today we have the lovely Pau. You know, look at her, you know. <laughs> she might look very quiet and demure but she has made strides, very huge strides in business. And she's been making delicacies and cakes and just everything that... You know, everything about food and delicacies and sustenance, yeah? Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. You know, uh, very quickly for those of us who don't know you, introduce yourself, your name, and just a quick background as, as to who Pauline is. Uh, my name is Pauline. Mm -hmm. Pauline Kinja, a mother, mm -hmm. mm, an entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, what exactly do you do? Because I, I know everything about Pauline. <laughs> I have done my research. I have read everything that pertains to you. But um, what what do you do uh, in business? Um, the CEO of Power Delicacies and Caterers. Mm -hmm. uh, we are tentatively six years old in the industry. Yeah. And we do all kind of events, Weddings, birthdays, baby showers, corporates, like everything. Okay. Yeah. So six years is a long time to be in business, especially successfully, because most businesses that are related to food most of the times don't have a huge shelf life, ironically. But um, six years in the business, how did it start? Uh, I started from my house. Uh, in 2015, wow. I would say, yeah. uh, cooking mandazi, samosas, chapatis, yeah. selling to my people in the estates. Uh, then I think I opened a page on Facebook, I started reaching a bigger number, yeah. and so almost one year, I would say almost one year down the line, I was just doing those mandazi, samosas, the bitings. Yeah. Then now I happen to meet a client to ask me if I do catering. Yeah. Actually, I didn't know what is catering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but right. no, I could see other people doing, yeah. but I wasn't there was yet. Outside yeah. yeah, I told her yes. Then she was like, I'll give you a business. Mm -hmm. She came to my house, mm -hmm. she bought snacks, and then she connected me to a client. Mm -hmm. And the rest of this tree. OK, yeah. so starting small with the business, and then it thrives what would you say are maybe the limitations of having a very small business but you have so many clients who, are, who want your product uh, does it affect you know the quality that you now start putting out no it doesn't at all because maybe like when you start growing you know like uh, under more people in your business like uh, chefs like a uh, maybe people to supply, maybe people to set up and all that. Yeah. So like you don't, you actually, the more you stay, the more you improve the quality. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how do you now um, transition from, it's a small business, I'm just selling to the people in the neighborhood, it's my friends and family, it's a WhatsApp group situation, to now transitioning into, it's a Facebook page where all these other strangers want my product, um, especially the facilitation of transport. You now have to, have to figure out to a boda, are they reliable? Will the boda person take my product <laughs> and eat it? You know. No. So how exactly do you transition to a small business to now a thriving situation? Uh, like I said, the more, the more, maybe like the more you grow, the more you get better. Mm -hmm. So we started, like when I started, I couldn't supply to everyone. Mm -hmm. I had like a few Boda Boda guys, like I think five. Mm -hmm. I could call them to my house, then I give them the product, then they deliver. Then I still had someone who was helping me in deliveries. Other times I could go. Yeah. But then when we started growing, we started buying cars for our businesses, we started buying trucks. Mm -hmm. And I think now you're able now to to manage everything because at least you have a bigger a bigger number of people who are now like like I think involved in the business okay. because now you have a supervisor maybe you have a manager you have uh, maybe like someone who's in the kitchen 
as in the more you grow, the more the more you don't even realize that you're growing. True. You don't yeah. because every day you wake so up and then yeah, okay. you don't realize you're growing until you rea until you realize that your store is your store is full. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And yes. This really does sound like a grass to grace story. Yeah? Yes. So do you think at any point when you started off your business, what was the dream? What was the, like what was the purpose of starting the business? Did you ever think it would be this huge industry you have right now? Okay. I think I had a dream. Like I really, I really wanted my business to thrive. Mm. But now I didn't know how. So when I started, I was just following my passion. Yeah. Because when I started, it was not out of anything else, but out of passion and I felt like it's time to do this. Mm. I think now I'm ready for this. Yeah. And just passion has been the key factor in this. It has led me to where I am today. True, yes. awesome. And given your time in the industry, of course we have a few things that we'd love to learn from you. Um, and that is being stable and having to sustain a business for this long. How do you do it? It's not easy. I it's wouldn't not. say it's easy. Yeah. Uh, but every challenge you take as a as a learning curve, yeah. yeah, as a learning curve, because mm -hmm. maybe today you face this challenge and then tomorrow you get better. True. So let's say maybe like uh, when you were starting, it was not easy even to convince the client that I can cook. Yeah. It wasn't easy to convince the client that Pauline, mm -hmm. who maybe has just started cooking, mm -hmm. can now cook good food, can now do this, until now people see your work, mm -hmm. until people also taste your food exactly. and they are sure now they can give you business mm. and remember you're not the only one in the industry yeah. you still have a competition, competition. Uh, a big one mm. not small so like uh, like uh, i think everything goes back to passion you have now to to be learned by passion not by money true yes okay yeah and as a woman in business would you do you feel like it was easier because you were a woman in um, a largely feminine, you know, line of work. Did you feel like it was easier for you as a woman or was it harder for you because you were a woman in that business? I think it was easier mm. because uh, I think clients trust m women yeah. more than men. Yeah, yeah so, so it's an advantage. Yeah, it, it, it was an advantage and uh, I was able to get through to clients easily mm. because at least maybe you're able to convince them also, yeah. yeah. Okay, Yeah. and speaking of clients, as your business continued growing uh, and expanding, how are you now able to identify new clients or did you just rely on the word of mouth? You know, somebody liked my product, so they're going to tell a friend to tell a friend or did you now take initiative to, ha, huh, this is someone who would benefit from what I'm, I'm, I'm producing. So how did you now identify the clients? Mm, I think when you do a good job, mm. I would say clients just show up. Yeah. Like they don't, they don't, you don't strain getting clients mm -hmm. when you do a good job. So maybe like uh, I, would, I would do a, one event mm. and then I get like three, three clients from the event. True. Or I get a client who will refer, a client who will refer clients. Mm -hmm. That is how I think I've grown all along. Mm. It, it wasn't very hard to convince people that we do catering yeah. because they could see what you do yeah. and once a client is happy, they refer the other one or maybe like a client attends an event that you're in and then they are able to give you a job without even thinking twice. So the bottom line is you have to be really, really good yes, at what yes. you're doing. Yes, yes, at what you do. Exactly. Yes. Um, and when you start a small business, you know, uh, when you started off, you're just cooking um, and making mandazis and chapatis at home. Um, I don't think there's the need for you to look into the legal structure, mm -hmm. the taxes and yeah. everything. But now as you expand into a big business, it's now necessary yeah. for you to look into legal work. And I feel, especially in our country, most people don't um, are not thinking or are not keen on let's let's go and do some legal paperwork for our business. So, how exactly did you go about that? Uh, le, le, as we grew, as we grew, mm -hmm. we we had now to get maybe like to register our company. Mm -hmm. We had to get uh, the legal documents. The uh, the city council documents and all that 
and uh, I think for every business to maybe like to to make it up there, it has to have documents. Yes. Yes. And taxes. Yes, it is a must. So how do you feel about the tax burden, especially in time? Has it gotten better over time or has it gotten worse? Uh, I wouldn't say it is better or worse, but of course mm -hmm. it is eating into our pockets. Yeah, it's something you have to do. Yeah, but it's something you have to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay. And you had talked about... Um, competitors especially in the business how do you manage competition now mm, it's easy i would say it's easy to manage the competition because i mean the world the the ground is too big for us all exactly that is what i would say yeah there's there's room for everyone yeah there's something for everyone mm -hmm. i wouldn't say that uh maybe like my competitor uh, is maybe like I'm struggling because of a competitor. No, I wouldn't say that. Mm -hmm. There is something for everyone, and if you do a good job, I mean, we cannot even satisfy the market. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And given your growth curve, how do you now identify the steps to getting to the next level? How do you, fi how do you figure out that you know we have been at this stage for a hot minute now it's time for us to get on to the next level it's time for us to have a store in a different city how do you identify that it just happens mm -hmm. because uh, like i said when clients come and see your good work some people will call you in outside nairobi kakamega machakos mm -hmm. mombasa maybe now when time comes and then you're like i can spread my wings now true yeah okay yeah and what would you say is what makes Pau Delicacies stand out? What, what, what is your unique selling point? Because everyone can cook, you know. Most people yeah. are doing um, outside catering. Most people are doing cake deliveries and all the small bites and everything. What makes your business stand out from the competition? Uh, I would say our setup. Mm. Our setup makes everything like standouts mm -hmm. and of course we have a niche maybe like uh what to do good like uh there's one selling point that you'll never go wrong when you're doing a business yeah. so like our setup is amazing mm -hmm. our food is awesome like the quantities you have to you have to see what the market is lacking mm -hmm. and then now when you just maybe like uh you give you give it to the market and you you're easy to go yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And you you had mentioned how you started small, you know. You started from the comfort of your house. You were just doing your thing. Um, did you feel the need to take out a loan or was it now based on savings? You save a little amount and then you start your business. And would you recommend for businesses to take out a loan as a starting capital? I would never recommend anyone to take a loan when they're starting yeah. because, I mean, you don't know about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. you're, you're just starting. Yeah. You don't know where you'll be tomorrow. Exactly. Wait until you grow. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, when we started off, I think there was no need to take a loan. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no need to go big, yet you're small. Mm -hmm. So I had to take every small step and maybe like uh, a year or two years later, I was able now to, to give, like, uh, when I get money for catering, mm -hmm. I buy items with a profit. Mm. It took me quite some time yeah. before taking a loan for my business. Okay. Yes. And how long did it take a while before you now break even, before you now you stop struggling and now yes. you can make a profit? How long did that take? It took three years. Wow. Yes. Three years <laughs> of just struggling. Yeah, you're struggling, you're doing 20 packs, you're doing like maybe at most you can do is 100 packs. Mm. And you feel like you've just killed it. Okay. Yeah, but then when now the challenge came for like 3,000 packs, mm -hmm. 500, 700, 1,000, then you're like, wow. We can now break even. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Yes. And uh, now tell us about the farming aspect of your business. Uh, we have a sister business, which is Balde Farm Fresh. Mm -hmm. Like, that, this one came as a result of COVID. Mm -hmm. When COVID knocked on everyone's door, on everyone's door now mm -hmm. we had to do a plan B because we were not doing catering that time. Mm -hmm. Everything has stopped to, uh, to do no with catering. Mm -hmm. No events. I mean, even the events that were paid, 
your leg. You have to refund. Either refund or now push to later. until God knows when. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just not easy. So now I went to grocery business, mm -hmm. which is Pauli Farm Fresh. I, and I think it really also helped when the catering came back in 2021 mm -hmm. because now we were getting everything easy from our shop. Exactly. Yes. So how, um, what about the snacking business? Did, it, did, did this mean that COVID brought your business to a complete halt or is it just certain aspect of the business that were not working? No, for catering, like we had a good seven months stall, like nothing is happening in no 2020. Snacks, no, nothing. no, nothing. You yeah. can't deliver because you know the stigma that was there, like mm. you can't even touch, I don't know what, what. Yeah. So there was nothing that was happening. And then now when it was, when I think it was open towards <coughs> end of end of October, mm -hmm. uh, now there were just few people, like few numbers that we couldn't even break even. In business, especially now you have two two businesses yes it's the same line but they're also you know uniquely different how do you know when to start stop being solo and now get now employees uh when the demand is high mm -hmm. you of course you of course have to bring people new mm -hmm. people and but uh, most of the time it comes in the the peak season comes from august mm -hmm. so now you know like I need to add people, I need to have permanent people for even up to December mm -hmm. because you don't want to mess at all, at all. Okay, you yes. mentioned peak season. Could you please explain <laughs> that, especially in your business? No, I mean like, uh, you see, there's, every business has a peak season. Mm -hmm. So our business peaks from August. Uh, I think August to December, you're always booked. Uh, like every always a wedding somewhere. Wedding, corporates. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there's like everyone is doing events. Yeah. Towards the end of the year, everyone is doing events. Mm -hmm. So it's quite busy for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now, um, especially now that you've mentioned peak season, what about um, when it's off peak season? Uh, do you feel the need to let go of some people who, you know, would now be a burden, would now be not doing anything else? So if that is the case, are you now hiring employees? according to season or is it just now full time mostly mostly we do we do casuals mostly mm -hmm. but uh, i have permanent uh, like five permanent mm -hmm. but now the casuals are many mm -hmm. i have like 40 casuals mm -hmm. But there are times that we are not very busy, but they understand because yeah. not every weekend we are busy mm -hmm. and when we are not, they are always waiting. Okay. Yeah. And now let's talk about something different, which is social media or rather the power of social media. What would you say has been the effect of social media on your business? Uh, social media. I think it has done well in my business. Mm. From the time I started advertising mm. up to now, until that uh, there are people who trust my work, yet they have never even attended any of my events. Mm. But they, they keep on telling me, one day you will cook for me. Oh, yeah. One day I'll give you a job, you know. And I feel like uh, you don't just sit down, advertise, just mm. advertise every day. Like, don't get tired mm. because it's your work. Exactly. Yeah. So what social media medium do you think works best for your, your business? Is apparently, Instagram, Facebook? Apparently Instagram is doing good, but when I started, mm -hmm. Facebook was doing better then. Yeah. But now Instagram is, I think, is the best. Have you transitioned to TikTok? Or yes, yes. Or is Gen Z? No, we are. For you? <laughs> no, no, we are in TikTok also because, I mean, you never know, you never know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the word of mouth. Uh, sometimes a client will be referred to you based off of the experience. They say, yes. You know what? I ordered from Pau. It was awesome. You should too. And they share your number. That is how the word of mouth works. Yeah. However, have you had the negative uh, side of word of mouth because it goes both ways you know there are some times where a client is not satisfied with you know the service they have received so now how do you mitigate that how do you say um, i'm sorry you know you didn't get what you were what you were looking forward to how do you deal with such situations 
Okay, of course, in business, you cannot say that you're positive throughout. You have, uh, of course, there's that negative aspect, maybe. Yeah. Or, oh, okay, also some clients are a bit difficult, I yeah. would say. <laughs> it's not easy also to live with everyone. So, we just try to find a way of apologizing mm -hmm. and eventually we become friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, what would you say would, or were the challenges that you were facing when you started your business? Uh, First, the challenge was transport, mm. uh, maybe like uh, transporting to a client. Mm. It wasn't easy because, like I said, we were doing borders. Actually, at that time, I think we didn't have these, uh, uh, the apps, mm. the bolts, the whatever, whatever. Yeah. I think it was a bit, those taxis and maybe like you just call your border guy, you yeah. know. Yeah, sometimes maybe they come late. Mm. They come like 30 minutes late. They find that the client has gone. Mm. Now coming back, you have to pay them, and now you have also like to go at a loss yeah. because I mean, the client to see mostly depend on delivery. Yeah. So now when you don't find the clients, they have gone because also time is money. When they becomes an issue. yeah becomes an issue, mm -hmm. so that was a bit of a challenge when you were starting. Mm -hmm. Also maybe getting the right the right workers. Because you can't do everything by yourself. Yes, you of course, to. yes, I have that passion. Mm. I can cook, but I can't cook for... A hundred people at once. Uh, yes, alone. Alone. Yeah. alone. So now getting the right people was also a challenge. But I think as we grew, mm. now you, you identify the people that you can work with. You have so many now you're choosing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those are the only challenges you face. You have been the, lucky in business. <laughs> <laughs> I think those are those are the major challenges and maybe hiring of utensils mm. because uh like in catering uh -huh. you have to have utensils like uh hmm, a lot of them on say plates, spoons, yeah. what, what, glasses, everything. Yeah. I think that was also another challenge. So now do you think it is cheaper to hire the utensils than to buy them and have them as yours only? It is not cheaper to hire, uh, but you see also buying maybe like when you're getting into business, mm -hmm. it's a bit tricky. You might yeah. end up not using them. Uh -huh. So you have to wait for quite some time and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me I had for two years. Okay. Yeah. That's a long time. <laughs> it was a long time and maybe like most of the money was going to hiring. Mm -hmm. Like a bigger percentage. Mm -hmm. But now I don't hire anymore. Okay. Yeah. Um coming back to the challenges, what what would you say are some of the mistakes people make in costing during the initial stage of business when you're just starting out? What are some of those mistakes that you made and now you have learned from them? I think my first catering business, I went to Moranga all the way from Nairobi for 20 people. I actually remember then I just I just laugh at myself. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it was an eye opener. Mm -hmm. uh, I would cook for 20 people all the way to Moranga. Mm -hmm. So, like, I think I cooked food for over 50 people because I didn't know how to cost. I didn't know how to, like, all my profit went to, <laughs> to the business. So, I normally say maybe, like, uh, if you're starting so out, it, you. it was like a round trip, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, of course, I took pictures. Mm. The pictures, of course. Yeah, they helped. They, okay, they were not so good, but I mean... <laughs> <laughs> they, they they gave a message out there yeah. that Pauline is doing catering, mm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I would say when you're starting, take it slow, maybe get someone who can mentor you into the business because you might be stuck forever yeah. waiting to grow. Yeah. Yeah. And tell maybe someone if uh, they really want to start, let them not shy off. They yeah. can just get a mentor to mentor them yeah. because costing I mean, when you're, when you're doing the costing, you have to be very, very sure, like, this is what I should do. Mm -hmm. This is what I should get at the end of it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you might, you might never get returns in your business. True. Yeah. And when you are, you know, in the initial stages of starting your business, sometimes we have this dream and this expectation of how things are going to go. And we expect they're going to go that way. And then reality does the thing and you know it's it's a difference between what you were expecting and what the reality is right now so now how do you come to terms with what's happening currently because i think that's that's a, a huge demotivator for for most people yeah yeah 
It is actually it is because well, actually most the most of the people in business, it's really really demotivating us. Yeah. And you know, I think most of the people they rely, like the government relies, on the people in the business mostly. Yeah. So, I mean, you just pray. I say sometimes you can't do much. You just pray and sit back and I mean. You just <laughs> yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. Exactly. There's nothing you can do about it, Kabisa. Okay. Yeah. And speaking about you know being ready for the next challenge, we have already gone through a pandemic. We have learned our lessons. So have you now incorporated um, a, an escape plan or a contingency plan in case we fall into another pandemic or into another global catastrophic event? Have you now put that into the works? Okay, I think we are still healing from COVID. Yeah. We are not even like caught away. We've not even healed caught away mm. from COVID. So I think we are not ready for anything now. Yeah. We, just, <laughs> we just want business to prosper. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe like uh, we are hoping for the best because yeah. you can't say like you plan ahead mm. because in business, you know, like most of the people in business, they used all their savings in 2020, yeah. 2021, things were not very good. Mm. We started just doing business the other day, 2022. Yeah. Mm. So 2023, we are hoping it's the year that will just be a good year for us in yeah. business. So we are not ready for anything. I would say personally, I'm not ready for personally. anything. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that is quite the challenge. Yeah. Um, but now, um, how, how do you now not give up? Because as I'd mentioned earlier, um, restaurant businesses or businesses that have to do with, you know, food and catering, uh, nine times out of ten, they will fail. And no one has ever quite figured out why they're failing. So how do you now make sure that you stay in business and it's a st sustainable way to stay in business. Uh, I think once you grow, it's very hard for someone to to fail as long as you put you put the the key factors in order. Like you like you don't change the quality number one. Like you you're just moving. You don't you don't look back yeah. because if you do, mm -hmm. you might end up like uh, doing many miles back away. So yeah. uh, I I think in this business. The key factor is uh, just moving forward yeah. and uh, not giving up because if you give up, yeah. I mean, there's nothing much to do. Yeah. And I think we're going to touch uh, very quickly before we wind up on a very taboo topic, especially in Kenya, which is money. People don't really like talking about money and their finances and exposing them. Um, how much of financial discipline actually goes into, you know, having and sustaining a business? Oh, did I get that? <laughs> yeah, financial discipline. Like, mm. how, how do you make sure you're using your money correctly? Because sometimes, oh. especially when you make a profit, the go-to thing is... I will reward myself. And I think in our generation, we, we have this culture of kujipati asanti. <laughs> How do you make sure you're not giving your, you're not thanking yourself too much and you're actually plowing back some of that money to your business? Okay, I think uh, catering business has a lot of challenges mm. because every day you feel like you're not there yet. Mm. Like you have this item, you want this. You have this, you want this. So if you're also not maybe like very careful, you may, you may end up using all your profits mm -hmm. in... Trying to get something else. Something yes, new. yes. Mm -hmm. So like a, a business should have at least a quarter of it. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you put back in the business. Of course, there are workers to pay. Yeah. Of course, there are so many other things to do to pay yourself, to reward yourself like you're saying, exactly. <laughs> but not so handsomely. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you never put money back in the business, definitely it will just crumble. Exactly. Yes. And how do you now cater to different people, especially people who are, who are at different economic levels? Because it's one thing to cater a party in Runda, and then there's a person who comes to you and says, hey, listen, Pao, 
I have a strict budget, this is what I'm working with. How are you able to navigate that? Uh, like uh, in my company, mm. I have all types of, I mean, I cater four types of clients. Mm. Like if you're on a budget, budget mm. I am able to do that. If, you're st if you still want something like out of the world, mm. I am able to do that. It's all about maybe sometimes I ask clients, what's your budget? Mm -hmm. Or maybe like uh, how many people are you looking at? Then you're able to customize uh, a menu. Yeah. Some will tell you, of course, maybe like uh, my budget is this small. Are you able to do this? Mm -hmm. And then you just come up with something that you're able yeah. to do. Because you can't say that you want to do only high-end clients. Exactly. You have to cater also for other clients mm -hmm. who have also invited high-end clients. You understand? Mm -hmm. And that is how you get business. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, um, also on the, on the part where you said you can't only cater to high-end clients, we have seen businesses who only cater to high-end clients. No, apparently mm -hmm. we, are, we, are actually, we are actually doing all the clients yeah. because, uh, I mean, I think we you want... You never know who you're going to help. You never know who is going to give you this, your, get your next job. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There, it's, it might be someone in that low budget wedding mm. who will give you a higher job. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a game of chance. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't, you can't say that you won't do this because they are working on a budget. If you're True. able to fit in their budget, just do it. If you're not able, well, wish them all the best. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for, you know, gracing us with your presence. Thank you. And, you know, giving us an insight of what goes on in your business and in the industry. Um, as we're leaving, as we're winding up, what advice would you give to, you know, six years ago, Pau, who was starting out, you know, a girl who has this dream, who has this plan, who has this idea, but is yet to actualize it. Uh, I don't I tell, tell people, I normally say anyone can cook. Mm. I, that's, what I, I tell, I, that's what I tell most of the people. Anyone can cook. So please, if you think you can, mm. and you're just sitting, waiting for some magic to happen, happen yeah. please yeah. let that magic happen through you. Yeah. I mean, it's all about believing in yourself. Because when you started, you started so small, yeah. Uh, and still people on the samosas from me, they're like, Pao, would you still do samosas? Yeah. I tell them, yes. yes. And they still sell samosas if a client wants. Yeah. I mean, because I know where I started from. So I tell people, if you can, if you can do something, don't sit there, just wake up, do that thing. Yeah. And I mean, be passionate about it. Exactly. The rest will happen. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, as we wind up, could you tell people where to find you, where to find your business, uh, and your social media? Okay. We are based in Karen, go for Galen, that is where our kitchen is. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Pao Delicacies and Caterers, on Instagram, Pao underscore uh, Delicacies, TikTok, Pao Delicacies and Pauline Kinja, mm. and uh, yeah, you can also find us serving outside there. Exactly, <laughs> if you bump into my wedding, yes, yes. remember how you saw her. Yeah. So thank you very much for coming, and thank you for tuning in. As always, you can be a part of the conversation on Twitter at Ibri TV Kenya, and Instagram at Ibri TV Kenya. The hashtag is The Millionaire Mind. My name is Turi Faye, and until next time.